Pastor Don Spivey here. Thanks so much for tuning in today and downloading or streaming this message. I pray that the Lord uses it to grow you in your faith. Here's a couple of things I want to run by you before we get started. First off, I pray that as you consume this material, it will be a supplement to your growth in the Lord. I also pray that you won't use it as a replacement for gathering together with your church family in person for worship. Secondly, if you are looking for a church home, I'd love to meet you and answer any questions that you might have. You can text the word online to 352-822-3878. That's online to 352-822-3878. Now friends, as we listen to God's word being preached, my prayer is that our hearts will be stirred. Our love and affection for Jesus will grow deeper and deeper. That's my prayer for you and for myself. God bless you. Have a great day. Throughout the summer, and uh, we also have our children in the room. Um, kids, are you guys excited about being here today? Say yes. Okay. Not what I was hoping. Not what I was hoping. All right. Um, but we are excited to have you. And if you're a guest with us, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Don Spivey. I'm the pastor here and I love serving our church. And you might be wondering, why do we have all the kids in the auditorium with us? Um, because that is what we do in the month of July. Uh, we invite the children in and we give all of our, um, our, all of our volunteers uh, in children's ministry a, a little bit of a break. And uh, they can travel. And we have a lot of people traveling in, in and out. Uh, for, the, for the summer, for July. Um, also, though, um, even bigger than all of that, bigger than all of that is inviting our children into worship with us so that they will see it modeled, right? So we, we, they need to see mom and dad worshiping Jesus. They also need to see grandmas and grandpas worshiping Jesus. They need to see young and old Old, is that an okay statement? Old? I don't know if it'll get me in trouble. They, they need to see the younger and the maturer worshiping Jesus, okay? And so we model that for the kids. And so I, I pray that you heard what Scott said a while ago. Um, take this opportunity. When you leave here today, take the opportunity to talk to your children about what it means for communion, the Lord's Supper, that time, how significant it is for us. And your children have been encouraged today to take notes, and they've got that, that clipboard there. And guys, I hope you do. I hope you take notes and write things down. And then parents, let's do our part and have conversations about what they've written down. And so talk to them about those things to help process those things. Um, and today it's highly, highly practical in uh, the book of Proverbs. Let me tell you a quick story. Do you, remember, do you remember what you were like when you were 13 years old? Yeah? Does anybody want to go back to the days when you were 13 years old? I don't really, but I, I remember um, being 13 years old and playing on the Little League All-Star team. And we were terrible, just horrendous. Uh, I, was, I was living as a kid. Most of the time I lived in Eustis, but I moved around like 26 times across Lake and Sumter County. Uh, but this particular time I was living in Eustis, and so I had the opportunity to play on the Little League All-Star team. And it's not, I'm not bragging about this fact. Again, we were terrible. But there was one kid on the team. His name was John. And John would try to convince everybody that we were not terrible. And John um, was one of those kids, and you've, you know this person um, as a kid and probably as an adult. They never stop talking, ever. They're, they're always, uh, you know, if you're into sports and stuff, they're always trash-talking the other team. They're trash-talking everybody. Nobody is, is uh, free from the trash-talk. And so this kid, John, we finally named him the mouth. And we would call him the mouth of the south. Anybody have a friend like that? It's probably you if you're not raising your hand. If you don't know somebody like that, it's you, and you've already give, been given a nickname. This kid ran. I'm not even exaggerating. Okay, so we were terrible. We lost the first game in the All-Stars, um, and then uh, you're in the loser's bracket. You lose another game, you're done for the summer. And so um, we lose the first game. A couple days later, we travel over to Oviedo to play their Little League All-Star team, 13 years old, and it was a battle. You know, it's back and forth, back and forth, and finally, at the end of the game, the dust settles, and, and we are victorious. We won by one run. Come on, somebody. We were excited. We were so excited. Yeah, yeah, reliving those 13-year-old days right now. We won by one run because the other team made an error. But we still won. It's a win in the books. The game wasn't even halfway through, and the entire dugout of the other team hated the mouth of the South. 
They absolutely hated this kid. Not only that, the, the stands, the other team's stands, they hated this kid because of his mouth. The majority of our stands hated this kid because of his mouth. The majority of our team in the dugout hated this kid because of his mouth. And I'm not even exaggerating. You think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. Just over and over and over. He would make fun of everybody, including your mama, like every single one. He was like, what was the boxer? Sting like a butterfly? No, not sting like a butterfly. Butterfly is not. What's his name? You know his name. He's like that on steroids as a 13-year-old with no filter. So after the game, we do what teams typically did, and we would go get something to eat. We all go to eat together, so we go to Burger King. It's great. What do 13-year-old boys do in Burger King after winning a game? We get the crowns, you know, those, those paper crowns, and we put them on our heads because we're the kings of all-star teams. We think we're the best. We're terrible, but we think we're the best. And who, lo and behold, comes walking in the door? The other team. And the mouth could not stand it. And so he is just over the top at this point. And let me fast forward a little story here just to get to the end. Um, Apparently, at some point during the night, the mouth had one too many Coca-Colas. And he had to go to the bathroom. Now, none of his team, including myself, we did not see the mouth go into the bathroom. But the other team did. And three or four boys followed the mouth of the south into the bathroom. And I promise you, he learned this verse to be true. Out of Proverbs. It'll be up on the screen. A fool's lips lead strife, and his mouth provokes a beating. (laughs) Proverbs is true. And it has a lot to say about our mouth and how we use our tongue and what we say and tear down and build up. Uh, There's a common phrase that says, um, words make worlds. It's not a biblical phrase, but I think it's a principle that we can find. Words make worlds. Now, we know that our words are powerful. Our words are very, very powerful because our words can shape lives. Our words can shape lives. For example, when, when we say, I love you or I'm proud of you, those words carry so much weight But also the words when we say, I hate you, and you're you're a mistake, or you're never going to live up to it. Those words can change lives. Words are powerful. Not only are words changing lives, words also change history. If you think about phrases that you've heard in various speeches, maybe you're familiar with, I have a dream, that speech. And and there are many of you in the room that remember when um, our president stood in front of the Berlin Wall, and what did he say? Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall. And what did he do? Eventually he did. Words change lives. Words change history. Words are powerful. And God calls us to use our words in some significant ways. But not only does it change lives and change history, words also change eternity. Uh, Many of you in the room are familiar with these words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but would have what? Eternal life? Everlasting life? Words change eternity. Um, If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be what? Saved. Words change lives. Words change history. Words change eternity. And I pray that you know that eternity change in your life. Know Jesus as your Lord. So words are powerful. Absolutely powerful. Um, That phrase, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Isn't that a lie? Like somebody's just lying to us when they said that. That is such a lie. Words are powerful. So for the next several weeks in our looking through Proverbs, um, we're going to deviate out of the more what we call expositional preaching, where we go verse by verse through a chapter or a section of a chapter. And we're going to deviate out of that and go a little more topically. And so for the next couple of weeks, or three weeks or so, we're going to look at what does Proverbs, what does the Bible have to say about how I use my mouth? Because I don't know about you, but I have every complication, every every problem in my life has been caused because of my mouth. Like my mouth is more dangerous than the things that I do, right? Like it, it is terrible. And in a in a crude sounding way, I make my living with my mouth, right? And so uh, I, I, I sometimes I can be pretty quick, quick with my tongue. 
And more often than not, to my shame, that is a cutting word. I mean, I've been guilty of, of cutting down. I've been guilty of lashing out. I've been guilty of sarcasm that cuts and, and hurts, and I do it on purpose. And I don't think I'm alone in that. I don't think I'm alone in that. Let me ask you a question. Do you say things to your spouse that you would never say to anybody else? Yeah. Are you guilty of saying things to your kids that you wish you could just reel it back? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, the biggest regrets in my life, the biggest regret in my life is how I used my mouth. Absolutely. My mouth got me in so much trouble one night, had a beer bottle smashed against my head. Like, my mouth gets me in trouble. I don't know about you. How do you, how do you uh, deal with your employees? How do you deal with your employer? How do you deal with your coworkers? Let me ask you this question. Are we willing to talk about the issue, or are we only willing to talk about the person? Where are we at? Why do we do these things? The Bible has a lot to say about this. Actually, James, the brother of Jesus, said something in this kind of a, a frame. He's, he's basically saying that, that our words are like, uh, like a spring of fresh water. Our words, it's water coming out. And, you know, uh, Florida is known for springs. I love going to Rock Springs, Kelly Park, and this water just gushing out of the cave there. It's beautiful. It's awesome. But what if it was water, fresh water, and then suddenly it was salt water, and then suddenly it was fresh water, and then suddenly it was salt water? That, that would be kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? It's unnatural. So the Bible would even tell us that as our words come out, they, they come out like praise, and then also words that come out that are condemning. This shouldn't be, especially out of the mouth of a Christian. So if you're a guest here today, curl up your toes because they're about to get stepped on. You know, and, and I want you to know this. It is not this me pointing at you. It is, well, it, it is, but it's also fingers pointing back at me. Is that fair? I need to hear this as much as we all need to hear what God's Word says. So um, uh, next several weeks, again, we'll be in Proverbs um, looking at how we use our mouth, how God calls us to. Today we're going to start more on the negative side. Oh, great. Yeah, more of the negative side. And we'll eventually, we'll get to the positive side. But today we're just going to look at the negative side. All right, so the kids in the room, I need two volunteers, two volunteers to help me out. Uh, if you'll raise your hands. Um, Gio, did you, help, did you help last week? No, come on now. Come on now. Um, 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 yeah, come on. All right, come on. Here we go. Come on up and stand on the stage. Somebody's like, what magic trick are you going to do today? Well, I don't know if it's actually that. It's not really a magic trick. But we're going to have a little bit of a competition between you guys. All right? A little competition. Here we go. Let me get one of you on one side and one of you on the other. All right, Xander, here we go. All right, go ahead and, and pop the cap of your toothpaste. Okay. Don't get too anxious. All right, we're going to have a competition. I want to see who can get the toothpaste out of the bottle, if that's called a bottle, the fastest. All right. You guys want to count it down? We're going to say one, two, three, and you're going to go. Okay, ready? All together. One, two, three, go. Come on. Hurry up. Yep. 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 Julia, you squeeze the toothpaste like I do at the house, and Sherry gets upset about that. Yeah. Good, good, good. Come on. Come on. We're going to count it down. We're going to give you just a little bit more. Um, this is taking longer than we anticipated. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're going to count it down in 10, and we're going to stop. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Now here's the second part of this game. We want you to put it back in. We want you to put the toothpaste back in. All right, guys. Seriously, Xander and Gio and everybody else in the room. These are like our words, right? We spew them out, but we really can't put them back in. That's how important our words are. So when we use our words, we need to use them in a way that is honoring to God and uplifting to others because we can't get that stuff back in. Is it possible? 
I mean, it's going to be really, really hard. Right? Would you guys give them a hand? And see me afterwards, and we'll give you some extra candy, because apparently I forgot it. We're good. Go ahead and sit down, guys. Thank you so much. Our words are powerful, and the way we use them matters, and we can't reel it back in. So let's look at God's Word, um, what it has to say. If you have a copy of God's Word, I pray and hope that you do. Go ahead and open up the Proverbs chapter 26. Um, We're going to briefly look through 18 through 28. But you're going to get to Proverbs 26. We're going to read through um, these verses, actually 17, uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 26, verse 17 through the end of the chapter. We're going to read through it, and then we're going to come back and talk about some things that God says about our, our mouths and look throughout Proverbs about it. And there'll be a lot of verses on the screen. So if you're taking notes, your pen's going to get dry and your fingers are going to be tired um, if you're going to write all these verses down. Um, the majority of them, I believe, we will have up on the screen. So today, I know it says 18, but we're actually going to start at 17. Here we go. All right. Verse 17. A person who is passing by and meddles in a quarrel that's not his is like one who grabs a dog by the ears. Like a madman who throws flaming darts and deadly arrows, so is the person who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Without wood, fire goes out. Without a gossip, conflict dies down. As charcoal for embers and wood for fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. A gossip's words are like choice food that goes down to one's innermost being. Smooth lips with an evil heart are like a glaze on an earthen vessel. A hateful person disguises himself with his speech and abhors deceit within. When he speaks graciously, don't believe him. For there are seven detestable things in his heart. Though his hatred is concealed by deception, his evil will be revealed in the assembly. The one who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever rolls a stone, it will come back on him. A lying tongue hates those it crushes, and a flattering mouth causes what? Ruin. All right, so what does God's word have to say then about how we use our mouths? So I think, first of all, uh, first off, we're going to talk about contentious, contentious speech, contentious speech. And that's somewhat described right here um, in this chapter that we just read. Contentious speech. What is contentious speech? That is spreading dissension, right? And so how many of us are guilty of contentious speech, of intentionally spreading dissension amongst people, amongst the group? I mean, we're in a church. We, we are part of a, a church, right? And churches would never, people would never spread dissension uh, amongst uh, the brothers and sisters of Christ, ever. Uh, and you know that I'm mockingly and sarcastically saying that. Uh, and also, I want you to know this. This is not an agenda. There's no agenda here. Like, if you're a guest and you're going to be like, wow, man, this church is jacked up. They hate each other. That is not the case. That is not the case. For the most part, I think we all love each other. For the most part. This is not an agenda, though, for, for real. Um, we don't do things like that. Uh, this is just God's Word, and I think it's very ap- applicable to the kids and also to us as adults. Amen? Amen. Contentious speech. So we're just going to list off a bunch of things, and then we're going to come back to this chapter and look at it even a little bit uh, deeper. Let's think about perverse speech. So God's Word tells us to get rid of perverse speech. Now, chapter 2, verse 12, chapter 2, verse 12, um, it will rescue you. This is talking about wisdom. We talked about this a few weeks ago. It will rescue you from the way of evil, from anyone who says perverse things. Uh, chapter 4, verse 24, you might write that down. Chapter 4, verse 24, don't let your mouth speak dishonestly and don't let your lips talk deviously. So we're talking about perverse speech. A couple more scriptures for you. Chapter 15, verse 4. 15 verse 4, the tongue that heals is a tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. Now, tree of life, that's what I really want to focus on, but I think we got to focus on the, the, the breaks the spirit part, the deviousness and perversive speech. Um, and then 24 verse 24 is a good example as well. 24 verse 24, whoever says to the guilty, you are innocent, um, people, peoples will curse him and nations will denounce him. Uh, So perversive speech, I I hope you're beginning to see what perversive speech is. Perversive speech is twisting the truth, okay? Again, look at it. Whoever says to the guilty, you are innocent. So they're guilty, 
But we got somebody coming around the side saying, no, you're innocent. We know you're guilty, but you're innocent. Perversive speech twists the truth. Not unlike Satan did at the very beginning as he twisted the truth to Adam and Eve. And so we have that. Look at verse, um, chapter 30, verse 20. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Twist the truth. Are we guilty of perverse speech? You see, this is, a, this is the, the way that we justify our life. I'm going to live my life in this way. And I'm going to twist the truth to be this, to show you that I should live my life in this way. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever made a financial mistake? Did you drive your financial mistake to church today? Aren't we really good at convincing ourselves that we need to buy something? That's a, the only illustration I was thinking about this week. I was like, uh, we're really good at selling ourselves on something we think we need, and then we get around and figure out, I really didn't need that thing. We twist the truth to make our life, to justify our life. What about this idea, too? Look at chapter 26, verse 28, and I want us to look at flattery for a moment. Flattery. A lying tongue hates those it crushes, and a flattering mouth causes ruin. A flattering mouth. Now, here in just a moment, we're going to go back to chapter 26. We're going to start back over at 17. We're going to work our way through 28. And I want to point some things out to you about the dangers of a flattering mouth. Flattery. Flattery. It's manipulation, isn't it? Flattery is manipulation with what? Smooth talk. Flattery. Uh, Me trying to get you to do something by me telling you how awesome you are in some specific way. Or even worse than that, um, that's how affairs happen, isn't it? Um, There's a little bit of flattery and a little bit of flattery and a little bit of innocent going back and forth. And suddenly the scripture would teach us that that flattery is drawing you away from your spouse. Why do we do these things? That's the question we need to be asking ourselves. Why am I prone to flattery? Why am I prone to receiving flattery? I'm, I'm trying to manipulate something. Maybe that is what you're trying to do. Manipulation with smooth talk. It's a manipulation to advance yourself. Flattery. I can, I can tell you something good about yourself, and that will make you feel good about me, and that will get me what I want. You want to get really devious? Really devious? I have learned, this is terrible, I shouldn't tell you this, <laughs> I have learned how to get you to, not just you, people, let me put it that way. I have learned how to get people to flatter themselves so that, that's how devious I am. I can get people to flatter themselves to make them feel better about themselves and they relate that to me because I got them to do it. We are wicked. You're like, that guy should not be opening the Bible and preaching. I don't tell you what, if you've ever found a perfect preacher, you found a perfect liar. (laughs) I'll tell you right now. All right. Flattery. Man, flattery. At work, flattery at the kids' ball game when you're sitting in the stands. It's just you and the other parents. And maybe your spouse isn't there. And if you don't think that happens, I coached a lot of baseball and I've seen that happen for sure. Flattery. Flattery. Online. Simple. It's easy online. Slide into somebody's DMs and you start flattery, or somebody comes and does that to you, and it tickles our ears. We love it. We're we're drawn to it. How about this one? Deception. Deception. God's word would say, let's get rid of deception. Um, uh, Back to 26, 18 through 19. Um, Here we go. Like a madman who throws arrows, flaming darts, uh, and deadly arrows, so is the person who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Deception. Are you guilty of that? Are you guilty of of actually making a joke, but there being truth in the joke? And then you're just like, I was just joking. I didn't mean it. Anybody? I know, see, here's here's what I know as a a speaker, as a preacher. Um, There are times when the the audience gets really quiet, and those are times when, um, when you're really bored and you're not paying attention. And there are times when the audience gets really quiet because you're like, oh, wow. That's me. Deception. Deception. Um, Why? That's the question. Why do we do it? We do it because we want something. And we think that manipulating the truth will help us get it. 
We do it because we think we're owed something. You owe me, and so I will deceive you and manipulate you. And we're going to look here in a little bit, tie it all together. How does the gospel, what does the gospel say to these, to these um, things that we try and do to ourselves, or try to do to each other and do for ourselves by the way we use our mouth? What does the gospel say about that? What about this, gossip and slander? Gossip and slander, my favorite one. Chapter 11, verse 13. A gossip goes around revealing a secret, but a trustworthy person keeps a confidence. I got something to say. I know something that you don't know. I want to be in the know, and I want you to know that I am the go-to person. And so I got something for you. Let me ask this question. Do, Do your sentences start with that, don't tell anyone else this, but? Aren't we guilty of this? Gossip. Um. Hey, I just want you to know. I want you to know about Billy. Man, I just need you to pray for Billy. Billy, he's, in, he's doing all kinds of stuff. Now let me list all the stuff that Billy does. Oh, that Billy. We got to pray for Billy. You ever been in a sad prayer meeting where it was really just a gossip session about all the things people are doing? And then you mask it with a little bit of a prayer? Try to sprinkle a little bit of stuff on it to make, it, make you feel better. Gossip. Slander. Slander is the idea of tearing somebody down, mocking them behind their back. Gossip and slander. Bragging. What about bragging? I'm guilty of this one for sure. Uh, chapter 27, verse 2. Um, Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. So God's word would say, don't be braggadocious. Just, just do good work. And others, will, others will, will brag for you. Others will do it for you. Um, uh, one, one, uh, uh, one scholar put it this way. He put it in his own little translation. I love it. Here we go. Let another tweet about you, not your own tweet, a stranger, and not your own account. Bragging. Why do we do that? We do it because we want to make people think a certain way about us, don't we? We do it because there's something, there's some kind of deceit inside our heart. There's something that says I'm lacking and I need your approval. And I want all of you to have the same idea about who I am. And we're all guilty of these things. Bragging. All of these things. When I do that, we do it because we are insecure. And we want to exalt ourselves. Now, do me a favor and go back to Proverbs 20, um, back to Proverbs 26. And let's go back to verse 17. And a lot of what we just kind of listed out right there, we'll see right here as we go through. And uh, we're just going to unpack it very, very quickly. Look at verse 17. It'll be on the screen. A a person who is passing by and meddles in a quarrel uh, that's not his is like one who grabs a dog by the ears. Now, when you read that, you're like, well, I, I got dogs. I like to grab my dogs by the ear. But in this culture... And like much of the rest of the world, um, dogs are, are, are scavengers. Dogs are scoundrels. Dogs are um, jackals kind of idea. They are not friendly. It's like the, the week before Easter a couple of years ago, I'm walking my two little bitty dogs down the sidewalk, and we get attacked by two rogue bulldogs. It was a, quite an event. And so can you imagine? It's none of your business. That's what he's saying. He says, a, a person who is passing by and meddles in a quarrel, not his, is like one who grabs a dog by the ears. Like, like you, it's none of your business. What, what is he saying? He says, you're a, you're a busybody. You're a busybody. And you don't even realize that you're hurting yourself. And that's what he's going to unpack here in just a moment. That it's like grabbing an animal, a dog, by his ears. I mean, even Samson didn't grab the fox by their ears. He grabbed them by the tail. I don't know if that's a better thing or not. (laughs) He hurts himself. Look at verse 18. Like a madman who throws flaming darts and deadly arrows. Like a madman. So he's going to have a comparison here. Watch. Like a madman who throws flaming darts and deadly arrows. And verse 19 says, So is the person who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. The madman who, who throws arrows and flaming darts 
that person's crazy. Madman, he's crazy. The joker, I was only joking, he's, he's not crazy. He's treacherous. So you got the, you got the crazy person, and you got, the, you got the crazy warrior, and you got the treacherous clown. I don't know which one, which category you fall in. Are you just crazy? You don't realize? And that is true. There are a lot of things that we do with our mouth that we do, and we don't even realize what it's doing. We, we say things, we distort the truth, but we really believe it. We really do believe it. And, and we don't even realize that it's bringing um, destruction to our lives. But there are also those who are treacherous clowns who say, I was only joking. But really, they weren't. Look at verse 20. Without wood, fire goes out. Without a gossip, conflict dies down. A charcoal for embers, and, as charcoal for embers and wood for fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. And so what do we have? We have a quarrelsome, quarrelsome person, a deceitful person, and as they are doing these things, what are they doing? They are sustaining the argument, and they're also inflaming the argument. Look at it again. And they're, they're sustaining as, were, as wood for fire. If without the wood, the fire goes out. So they're trying to sustain it. And then down it says, as charcoal for embers and wood for fire. Now they're trying to inflame it. Have you ever grilled a steak or a hamburger on the back porch or outside or at a park? And you just can't get the embers, the, the charcoal, just right. You know, like when your wife is like, hey, let's, let's, let's cook some steaks on the, on the barbecue. Let's barbecue some steaks. And um, can they be ready in about, I don't know, 15 minutes? No, they can't. And so you get the charcoal going, and what do you do? you got to get down there. That's what he's saying. He's saying that we're like that when we're quarrelsome. We're like that when we're deceitful. We're just, but we fight it by removing those things. Look at verse 22. Oh, actually, what we don't realize. So, so we're sustaining it, and we're inflaming it, but we don't realize that we actually end up burning the whole thing down. And so think about the community. Think about the church. Think about your family. Are you, are you sustaining the fire? Are you, are, you, um, are you getting the fire? Are you building the fire up? And listen, what you're going to do is destroy your family. And you're going to destroy, if you're doing that in the church, you're going to destroy the church. You don't even realize that you're burning it down. Look at verse 22. A gossip's words are like choice food that goes down to one's innermost being. A gossip's words are like choice food. So we love a gossip's words. We love to be in the know, don't we? And so we just feed on that information. Yeah, give me some more. Give me some more. And it's like choice food, and it goes down into our innermost being. And what goes down into our hearts, listen, will eventually come out on our lips. Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus, Jesus said the things that go into our mouth, that's not what defiles us. But the things that come out of our mouth, that's what defiles us. And why does it come out of our mouth? It's because our heart is jacked up. Our heart is wicked. And so it's like innermost being. Look at verse 23. Smooth lips with an evil heart are like glaze on an earthen vessel. So let's stop there. Smooth lips with an evil heart are like glaze on an earthen vessel. I was like, what does that mean? I mean, some of us have pottery or what have you and got a little glaze on it. Well, what we don't realize in this culture, that glaze, so when they, were, when they were, I think the word is smelting, smelting silver, and trying to get the, the impurities out of the silver, they would they heat it up and then get all this dross off of it and all this impurities out of it to make the silver um, purer. Well, what they would do with all of those impurities, they would use those impurities as a glaze for the potter. And so what he's saying is, Smooth lips with an evil heart are like glaze on an earthen vessel. What he's saying is, huh, all that glitters, it ain't gold. It's not gold. It looks good. It sounds good. It makes me feel good, but it's not good. It's just got a glaze over the top of it. It's covered with impurities. Look at verse 24. A hateful person disguises himself with his speech and harbors deceit within when he speaks graciously, don't believe him. 
Don't believe him, for there are seven detestable things in his heart. And so now what the, what this, what the, uh, the Proverbs are calling us to is that we need to be aware of these things uh, uh, that are going on around us. We also need to be aware of these things inside of us, and we need to have discernment to not believe him, to not believe her. Don't even, so, so what should we do? Don't even entertain it. Don't even entertain the gossip. Don't even bring it, allow it to come in. Early on here at the church, I, I got known as the person that hated gossips. I don't hate gossips, but I don't like gossiper, gossiping, you know. It's not healthy for us. Don't believe him. Verse 26, though his hatred is concealed by deception, his evil will be revealed in the assembly. You think what you're doing. We think what we're doing is in secret and behind the scenes, but God's Word says that it will actually end up coming out. And what does it do? It will burn you down. It will burn the community down, and it will burn you down. It will burn your family down. It will burn your job down. It will burn your, your friendships down. It will wreck all of it. So listen, verse 27. The one who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever rolls a stone, it will come back on him. What, what is, what's happening here? Well, you dig a pit, they would dig a pit to trap an animal, right? And he says, you're going to actually fall into your own pit. He's rolling a stone because he can't pick it up. And so what we have here is a comparison, a contrast between deception and destruction. And what God's Word says, you think you're being deceptive, but you're actually going to destroy yourself. Destroy your relationships. Destroy yourself. That stone that you think you're rolling away is going to eventually roll back on you. God's Word is powerful. It is so powerful. Listen to this. A lying tongue hates those it crushes, and a flattering mouth causes ruin. So what is the Proverbs telling us? What, are, what is he trying to tell us? He is trying to tell us that if we live in those ways, that eventually, um, that eventually we will be crushed. We will be, we will be ruined. That's what he says at the end. And a flattering mouth causes ruin. What we don't realize is that the villain victimizes himself. That I, as a villain, am actually undermining and destroying myself with my words. There is life and death in the power of our words. Our words create worlds. They change lives. They change history, and they change eternity. Let me point you to one other verse in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, here we go. Let, let no foul language. So no foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear it. So we see, we see this idea of foul language, and then we see giving grace, right? The word for foul language right there could be translated as rotten, okay? So it's like rot, something that is, that is rotten. Uh, I went over to my local store, and I wanted to get something that was rotten. And you're like, praise the Lord. Glad you got that. So kids, here we go. Let me get, let me, kids, come on down. Come on down real quick. We got enough time to do this. Come quick, 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 fast in a hurry. Just stand right there. Uh, just stand right there. All right, and I want to see if anybody, if any of you want this. Okay. All right. So we're going to take it out of the package. And so, whew, good night. I'm glad I didn't open it earlier. All right. Oh, seriously, that does stink. Okay. Uh, our words. Can we throw that verse back up? Our words, our foul language, foul language, like all the things we were just talking about, deception, dishonesty, like anger, rage, the way we use our mouths, the way we squeeze out the toothpaste and we can't get it back in, we throw our words around, but we can't reel them back. Here's a great word picture for you. Rotten. It's like having something rotten in my mouth. All right. I think I was just thinking of this. It's like having a fish in my mouth. Like a rotten fish. Oh, that stinks. Hold your breath. Would you like this in your mouth? 
Would you like this in your mouth? No, Gio, you want it in your... You, uh, does it, how's it, you don't care? And Gio's like, I don't care. Smell it, man. Oh, <laughs> it, Xander, do you want some? No? No? Yeah? No. Listen. Listen. We're going to... Ah! That is what our words are like when we use our words in ways that are destructive and deceptive and, and hurtful. You guys over here? You guys over here? You want some rotten fish? No. All right. Give them a hand, guys. Y'all can go sit down. I can't wait to shake your hand after the service. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> I went to Winn-Dixie last night, and I was like, give me a fish that's about to expire that you won't sell. sell. And uh, there we go. I thought about just catching a fish out, out, at the house, just catch a fish, and then use it for that. And I was like, that sounds cruel to me to just, like, catch a fish. And like, here's our illustration. You know, that sounds really, so at least this fish was already caught and was supposed to be used for something. That right there, rottenness in our mouth. Let's close it like this, guys. Let's close it like this. I want you to remember some things. Let me ask you a question. What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? Is it gross or grace? Is it gross or grace? What's in our mouths? Is it gross or grace? You know, Jesus never sinned with his mouth. Did you know that? Actually, 2 Peter, uh, or 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 tells us that. There was no deceitfulness that came from his mouth. Never. Here in just a moment, the band's going to come up and lead us in one final song of worship. But before they do, as they prepare, I really want you to hear these things because it's going to talk to us about how the gospel, very quickly, how the gospel fights this thing that we are so prone to do. Don't forget, Jesus fully lived out Proverbs. He lived Proverbs perfectly. Don't forget that the Word of God, the New Testament says that Jesus is the wisdom of God. Okay, so Jesus is the wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom. The wisdom that Proverbs is telling us to pursue ultimately is Jesus. So Jesus lives Proverbs out perfectly. Jesus never sinned with his mouth. Listen. Jesus was Jesus because you can't be Jesus. Jesus was perfect because we can't be perfect. You'll never be perfect, and that's why we need a perfect Savior. And so talking about the negative way we use our mouth really should point us back to the gospel, back to Jesus and how he lived his life. Listen, the one who had no deceit died for deceivers like us. The one who had no deceit died for the deceptive. The humble. Jesus was the humble one. He died for the bragger. He died for you. He died for you, and you don't have to seek for approval from other things and other people. The reconciler, the one who reconciles, is the one who died for the contentious. That's such good news. Don't lose sight of it. What that says to us is that we don't need to justify ourselves because Jesus has already justified you by his grace. And if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are justified. There are times that we stand up for ourselves, but there are times that we just need to let Jesus be the justifier. There are times when we just need to step back and say, God, God, God loves me. Jesus loves me, and I don't have to fight for your approval of me. I, nobody owes us anything. Jesus has given us everything. That's the gospel. You don't need to be slanderous and unforgiving because Jesus has forgiven you. You don't need to lie and exaggerate or brag to get others' approval because you have approval with Jesus. What would it look like for us? What would it look like for us in our, in our daily lives if we sought to remove the negative words and replace them with something else? What would it look like in your life? Would it change the way you relate to your spouse? Yes. Would it change the way you love your kids? Yes. Are you always nagging and 
pushing and nagging and making them feel like they never live up to it, removing that, what would it do? If you own a business and you have people that work for you or work with you, what would it look like if you just pulled that negativity back? What would it look like? What about your friends at school? You're like, I go to school, but I don't have any friends. Is it because of your, the way you use your mouth? Or maybe you're an adult and you're like, I don't have any friends. Is it because you're like the mouth of the South and you never stop talking? Maybe we could call this Proverbs, how we use our words, shut up. And you're like, we can't say shut up with the kids in the room. You know what I say back? Shut up. Maybe we just need to shut up. What would it change in our church? What would it change in our church if, if our church was known as a people of God that were, were not negative to one another or even negative to the culture, but we were positive towards the things of Christ and we allowed the gospel to shape our interactions with everybody around us? What would it do in our church? The walls could not contain the amount of people that would be here if they walked in here and saw fresh streams and not salt water, what would it change in our church? Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, and it'll be on the screen. Let all bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting, and slander be removed from you, along with all malice. Let's look at the next verse. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as, let's say that phrase together, just as, as God also forgave you in Christ. That's the foundation of how we use our voice, our mouth, our tongues. It's either, it's either gross or grace. It's either gross or grace. And let me just close it like this. If you don't remember anything, would you remember this phrase? God's grace removes your gross. God's grace removes your gross. And we need to be honest with ourselves. We got a lot of gross. And we need to seek the face of Jesus so that his grace removes that gross. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We are thankful, God, for your grace. God, we thank you for your grace. God, none of us in this room are perfect. And every one of us are guilty with how we use our, our mouth and the things we say. And God, we rely on your grace. And so, Father, I pray that you would uh, you would teach us and convict us to be people who do not have words that are filled with gross, but have words that are filled with grace. And so, Father, I pray that we would, we would change those habits. We would change those things about our lives through your grace, through your power in Christ Jesus. Father, as we worship and as we live our lives, I pray that you will remind us daily of what we have been given through you. Acceptance, forgiveness, security, love, all those things that we've been given through you, Lord, I pray that you would remind us and it would be the heartbeat of our interaction with each other. God, we love you. Friends, your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed for just a moment. Let me ask you a question. Are you guilty for how you've used your mouth? Would you just raise your hand? Is that you? That's me. Are you guilty for how you've used your mouth? Would you say, God, I, I want that to change is that you? Would you just say, God, I want that to change. Lord, change my heart. You might be here today and your heart can't change because you don't know Jesus as your Savior. And so my prayer for you is that you would trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and that he would change what's on the inside of your heart. That you would surrender, that you would repent and surrender your life to Jesus. Turn from sin and trust him. I pray that would be true of you today. Church, we're going to we're going to respond by singing. We're going to respond by praying. Hey there, thanks again for downloading or streaming this message. I pray that the Lord will use it to grow you in your faith. I look forward to meeting you one day soon at one of our worship gatherings. It's impossible for us to recreate online what you'll experience when you gather with us in person for worship. If you have any questions, go ahead and text the word online to 352-822-3878. That's online to 352-822-3878. Look forward to meeting you. God bless. Have a great week.